so much confusion about the hands, the hands in holy communion, a sleight of hand. In the Eastern Catholic churches, as I mentioned yesterday, when we approach to receive Holy Communion, the Eucharist comes from the altar through the icon doors by the priest. The posture we take is one of standing, tilting our heads back, open our mouth widely, and we hold our hands like this. Now we have a confusion. It's become a custom in many Latinite parishes, but in recent years, that if you come up into the communion line, you hold your hands like this, it means you are not receiving, but you want a blessing. Now we have a confusion. The Eastern churches, this means you're coming to Holy Communion. If you're not receiving communion, you do not come into the communion line. You do not present yourself at all. But if you are coming to communion, it's recommended you hold your hands like this. The second confusion is this whole controversy on communion in the mouth or communion in the hand. This is largely in the Western Catholic Church. However, we have to understand things historically. Originally, and mark my word, listen carefully, because a lot of people have this wrong. Originally, in the whole church, east and west, there was communion in the hand. They took the consecrated bread, and they went to the deacon who held the chalice with the consecrated wine, the blood of Christ. So people in the early church, east and west, now mark my word, east and west, took communion in the hand, and drank from the chalice. What happened, though, is Christianity began to grow, thankfully, in East and West. Both the Eastern churches, in other words, the Roman Catholic Church, and the Eastern churches discovered that they had to find a way to preserve the integrity of the Eucharist, that the communion in the hand was starting to pose a bit of a problem because of the more and more greater masses of people coming to Christianity and receiving the Eucharist. So both the East and the West arrived at a way to make sure that the sanctity of the Eucharist was preserved when people received communion. And they arrived at the solution of getting it directly into the mouth. In the Western churches, the Roman Catholic Church, they used, of course, the consecrated host, the wafer, and they put it on the tongue of the recipient. That got it into the mouth. They didn't have to worry about what happened if it's in their hand. In the Eastern churches, as I mentioned before, we came up with the spoon, the particle, the consecrated bread and wine, dropped into the mouth of the re-communicant. Some Eastern churches even use intinction. They take the consecrated bread, the priest does, dips it in the consecrated blood, and then gives it into the mouth of the recipient there. So we have to remember this controversy of communion in the hand, communion in the mouth, is really unnecessary because one or the other is not holier than the other. That's not why the change was made. It is not holier to receive communion in our hand. It is not holier to receive it in the mouth. It had nothing to do with holiness between the two. It had to do with preserving the overall holiness and integrity of the Eucharist when Christianity grew. So the solution was to get it right into the mouth of the recipient. And that is why both churches went to means of doing that, the Roman Catholic Church and the Eastern churches. But the main thing is, is that we approach the Eucharist with the sense of the integrity of what that is, the body and blood of Christ, but also our union, our participation in the community of the body of Christ, that we have to come with reverence, believe that it is truly the real presence of the Eucharist, and live a life in accord with all that the Eucharist means. The Eucharist is not just getting Jesus. It's about our entrance, our participation into, yes, Christ himself, but also into the body of Christ, which is the church on earth and all that it teaches and practices.